Last week, the right-wing media spin machine went into overdrive because of this legal filing, this vague legal filing by special counsel John Durham. This legal filing pointed to internet traffic that may have been linked uh, in some ways to the Clinton campaign, and it became this alleged scandal all across Fox and Breitbart and the right-wing web, all these shouts that Trump, Donald Trump, was spied on by the Clinton campaign. Those shouts were not based in reality, and by the end of the week, they really fell apart under fact-checking and even under Durham's own cleanup effort. But during that week on Fox, this was covered, I don't want to just say extensively, it was covered ferociously. We added up the mentions of Durham throughout the week. We came up with more than 600 mentions of Durham and of this so-called scandal. All of it really focusing, targeting on Hillary Clinton, that candidate, that former candidate, the Fox just can't quit. So, with that in mind, I got an email overnight that I want to share with you. This is from, uh, this is an email exchange between a Fox producer, actually a Fox editor, and Philippe Reigns, a longtime Clinton confidant. So let me show you this because it gives you a sense of what Clinton world is thinking about Fox, and maybe you'll agree, and maybe you'll disagree. This email is a request for comment, a pretty standard request for comment from a Fox digital editor saying, hey, we'd like to request a short interview with you to talk about your reaction to the recent headlines regarding the alleged surveillance of Trump's team. So again, rooted on a lie, but they're asking for an interview. So it's good they asked for an interview. Here was the response from Philly Brains. He said, I don't do TV anymore. But he said what the right is doing right now with its insanely overwrought and hysterical reaction to the most recent Durham filing will be a case study and yet another plunge deeper into the abyss. Fox and others like it pretend that it's providing information nobody else is covering. The audience is made to feel they're in on a secret that only they are overinformed, and the rest of us live in a bubble devoid of inconvenient truths. Philippe went on to say, you know that's BS. The distinction in coverage is in two interrelated ways, truthfulness and volume. Those covering it truthfully have looked at it factually and given it the appropriate time. Those treating their audience like fools to buy anything sold to them are being inundated with it. So what did the Fox editor say in response? He said, I'm going to request a write-up on this. We're going to get it up on the website. I'm also, I think he said, the channel will most likely pick up uh, and air portions of it, meaning Philippe's email. Uh, we're going to quote this on TV. We're going to air this on the website. That's what the Fox staffer said, but that was days ago, and none of those comments from Philippe Reigns have appeared on Fox. They haven't shown up on the website, as far as I can tell, either. So it's another example of how the Fox machine works. They obsessed over Hillary Clinton all week, talking about this being bigger than Watergate, uh, trying to cover every supposed angle. Then, when the Clinton camp actually has something to say, when one of Clinton's former senior aides has something really interesting to say, they ignored it. In fact, uh, Fox dropped off its Clinton coverage by the end of the week. Right around the time she attacked Fox in a speech and said the network was coming close to actual malice, a legal term that people usually use when they're thinking of suing someone. Adrienne Elrod is familiar with this Fox machine firsthand. She's the former director of strategic communication for Hillary for America. She's a Democratic strategist who was a regular on Fox back in 2017. But it's been some time since she's appeared on the network, and she's here with me now. Adrienne, why did you decide to stop appearing on Fox? Well, you know, Brian, first of all, thank you so much for having me on today. And I'm glad that you read Philippe's um, email in full, because it really does paint the picture of what the Clinton campaign and Hillary Clinton as a person has been dealing with for a long time when it comes to Fox News. Um, but look, you know, I thought, you know, Brian, after Trump won in 2016, uh, that perhaps, you know, some of us who were senior aides on Hillary Clinton's campaign going on Fox News and trying to, you know, have a dialogue, ongoing dialogue with the viewers would make some sort of difference. And I soon learned very quickly that it just simply wasn't going to happen. Um, you know, I looked at the topics that I often got about four to five minutes before I would go on air. Um, and, and no other network was covering some of these topics because they weren't newsworthy, because they were conspiracy theory driven, very much related to what were the topic that we're talking about today. Um, and it became that much harder to go on and even have a, you know, quasi serious conversation because, again, the topics that I was given were oftentimes about Hillary Clinton, who, of course, at that time had retreated into private life. And, and secondly, they were in complete diversion from all of Trump's problems as president. So I decided soon um, after, you know, maybe going on for about eight, nine months in 2017, this just simply wasn't working. And the mm. network was not even trying to have their, quote unquote, fair and balanced coverage, which they still like to tout.
So this is the tension that Democratic strategists feel. And in the case of Clinton, there's constant talk on Fox, I think fantastical, dreamy talk, that she's going to run for president again in 2024. Would, would you like to address that? What would you say to that? I think Hillary Clinton's made it very clear that she's not running for president in 2024. But look, Ryan, you cover this constantly, and I'm so glad that you do. If, if Hillary Clinton, if there's even one tiny inkling that she might run for public office again, Fox News is going to grasp onto that, and they're going to cover it. Why? Because she drives ratings. Driving ratings means driving advertising dollars, which means more revenue for the network. So the very thought that she or even her husband, Bill Clinton, won't be running for office again drives them absolutely crazy because they mm. need to try to find some narrative, some line of, of, of you know, of, of, of news reporting that they can use to try to keep their name in the news so they can drive advertising dollars into their network. And they talk about Hillary the spy while they ignore uh, Trump's classified document scandal. Adrian, thank you very much for being exactly. here. Let me bring the uh, panel Thanks, back Brian. with me. Mara Scavacampo here, Joe Perrin and David Zerowick. Joe, you were former president of Fox News. You left right as Roger Ailes came in and it became a cable network in the mid-1990s. But you've, you've observed Fox up close. Um, do you recognize the place that you we were at in the 90s when you were trying to build a, a news division for Fox? We did not uh, have uh, a cable uh, news organization, as you pointed out. And when Roger came in as chairman, uh, he asked me to stay on, but he asked me if I would uh, 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 agree to go along with creating an alternative news channel. And that was a buzz for me. Uh, and a buzz, I just said I can't uh, get involved in alternatives, and I left. Um, I do want to point out one thing, though, that yeah. this is a business. Right. This is not about journalism for them. This is about, as pointed out a moment ago, this is about driving ratings and revenues. And the way to be able to get uh, ratings and revenues, and this is a problem throughout the cable news, quite frankly, and, and is that journalism is sort of subordinated to the idea of having to be number one, get the ratings, and being able to make money. Fox is making billions of dollars. They've got, what, three to five million people watching in prime time? That's less than, that's a one percent of the population. But they're able to monetize that. And every time you mention, mention Hillary, yeah. or I can name Biden as senile, all that stuff, you end up engaging your audience. They stay mm -hmm. with you, and that drives your ratings up. So this is a business. Another example of that, uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Let's put on screen her recent tweet about Tucker Carlson. Carlson was smearing her for, for a long time on Friday night. She responded by saying, I want to know, why is Tucker allowed and paid to engage in clear, targeted, libelous harassment that endangers people and drives so many violent threats that people have to fundraise for their own safety, that they have to fundraise to protect themselves? David Zerwick, your reaction to this, uh, people uh, on every side uh, in the public, public space get threats. Tucker Carlson's family gets threats. But AOC's point is, these you know, individuals that he goes after who don't have the resources Tucker has, they end up feeling endangered. And she's using the word libelous. What do you read into that, David? You listen, I, I really, you know, I, when watching both of these, and I think the, the attack on Hillary Clinton and the attack on AOC are connected, is connected. When Fox hosts go after a lot of people, they're creating what Joe talked about. They're creating a narrative, and here's the vill villain, and they get very personal, and they want you to hate the villain. But when they do it with women, I, I thought, well, it's, it's kind of sexist. No, it's steeped in sexism and misogyny. And Tucker Carlson, I really think the, the way he went after AOC is, uh, is really problematic, and I'm glad you know, as a journalist, I shouldn't be saying, but I'm glad that Hillary Clinton, a lawyer, <laughs> raised the issue of libel and defamation with what Fox does. Um, I think you, Brian, said this in a newsletter this week. A lot of people on the right are wishing for uh, uh, an attack on Times versus Sullivan in the Supreme Court. You said, boy, Fox better watch out if that happens. The right wing channel, I agree. They are way closer to violating it than anybody else at CNN or even MSNBC. Well, that catches up to Times v. Palin. So this week, the Times prevailed in Times v. Palin. But there's a controversy about the judge sharing his ruling before the jury actually weighed in. And so now, you know, even more reason why this is going to go to the appeals. There's going to be more and more debate about libel laws and whether to loosen them up. So you have Hillary Clinton saying, Fox is close to actual malice. You have AOC saying, Tucker's libelously harassing me. What is, what is this environment where you have people now really engaging in legal talk, saying, I mean, look, let me put it this way, Mara. 
You don't think Hillary Clinton's actually going to sue Fox, right? She's not actually going to sue Fox News. No, for Hillary Clinton to sue Fox News for defamation would be the greatest gift that she could hand to them. And in fact, oh. Sean Hannity <laughs> says, bring it on. He was practically salivating at the prospect mm. because it would be great for their ratings. They would likely win, so it would be a huge PR victory for them. So I don't think that Clinton is going to invite something like that. But when it comes to all of these cases that we're seeing of public figures exploring avenues like this, yeah. actual malice, libel, defamation, it really brings to the forefront the challenge that public figures have because they don't just have to prove that it's false or that it injured them or damaged them in some way. They have to show actual malice, which is an almost impossible standard. Now, that is part of what makes the United States one of the most press-friendly countries in the world, and people can debate about the fairness of that, but it really is about protecting the freedom of the press. But we are now seeing some challenges to that, and there's a, a really phenomenal article that I would refer people to in the Washington Post today, an opinion piece by a law professor that talks about some of the challenges to these laws and that these defamation laws, we may be at one of the most vulnerable points that we've been in in decades.